Hey everyone, this is Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist and in this case I'm gonna be talking about some of the gear used yesterday in a day hike. We went with my friend Jay in, to um, a forest that's in, in, on the side of a mountain. It was an interesting opportunity to try some stuff up, what works, what doesn't, because uh, rain, uh, weather conditions weren't ideal, it was already raining when we got there. And then it got it got dark, so we ended up using flashlights and such. So it was a good opportunity to see some of the things that work, what doesn't, and what you actually need. So I'll try to do this as fast as possible, but without missing anything important. I got home yesterday, just uh, <laughs> threw everything that needed to be washed in the washing machine, took a shower, went to bed. This morning, took the kids to school, ran a few errands, and this is basically what I just unpacked. So this is basically everything that I use other than the underwear and socks that I see are missing here and a couple of, of clothing layers that this is basically everything that was used so let's start talking a little bit about uh, the actual clothing which uh, sometimes doesn't get enough uh, attention in terms of, of boots I took these caterpillar uh, boots these are basically quality working shoes I don't remember Steve it has the model name, uh, no look, no. But these are basically good uh, quality Caterpillar working shoes. And you may be thinking if you're a, a, an avid backpacker and such, uh, backpacking shoes are not working shoes. And that's very much true. Now the thing is, if you do this from the perspective of of survival and preparedness then you're not only talking about hiking either so if you're thinking that hiking and survival are uh, are the same thing you are very much wrong actually working shoes will be more relevant to a survival situation than hiking stuff okay guys we're going to be seeing lots of that here soon enough but hiking Backpacking, survival, three <laughs> very very much different things. At the very least, survival and preparedness has very little to do with, with backpacking and, and having fun in, in the outdoors. Uh, what I mean by this, and these are, uh, the, the shoes are actually a good example. Even though working shoes are not um, specifically made for trekking and backpacking, uh, quality ones do have um, several characteristics that would allow you to do so nonetheless. I, I've used these for for um, backpacking for, for miles without any problem, very comfortable as well. And they also have um, uh, certain things you would be looking for for um, a survival situation. For example, they're going to be very rugged, uh, constructed with uh, solid materials so as to provide good foot protection, so that's important. They will have, in some cases, a steel toe protection. Maybe for cold weather, you prefer synthetic uh, uh, toe protection. They will have, um, they will be slip proof, which is good for, for walking in, in uneven uh, terrain. They will have, yeah, good, uh, good, good traction, no doubt. They will have even protection in the sole about for uh, anything that punctures through uh, the, the rubber there. They will have protection in terms of electric shock as well. And uh, these are all security features that you will be finding in any good uh, working shoe, in, in any good working boot. And that's the kind of stuff you may end up needing in a survival situation, especially urban survival situations. Guys, when I recently talked about the looting that went on in, in Argentina, one of the looters died because of an electric shock. He was stealing, looting a TV set and he got shocked and died. <laughs> Maybe having this, these boots would have saved him. And now you may be thinking, well, I'm not a looter. Well, but still, when there's disasters, there may be uh, power lines uh, uh, broken on the ground. L a lot of people, if you look at some of the casualties, a lot of people in those cases die because of um, electric discharges. There was actually a, a store owner that has to protect his store. He electrified the fence. Maybe you, you didn't even notice. You... You lean against it and you get shocked because of that. So all these things are, are pretty much important. Besides, they are waterproof as well. And being quality ones, they are made for standing and walking quite a bit. Just five minutes even and just talking about shoes. Oh, don't forget about socks. I don't have the socks I use here. But socks with, uh, no matter how good the, the shoes that you have, if the socks are bad, you're going to be getting blisters. You're going to be getting wet. So have good uh, 
socks as well. Buy uh, socks that are specifically made for working boots or for trekking shoes. You will be paying a little bit more but they, they do provide quite a bit of an advantage. Uh, I prefer wool because it keeps you warm. Uh, synthetic materials are also good. Cotton, uh, not that great. Uh, so keep that in mind. In terms of the different layers, uh, a basic th synthetic layer, uh, I had like uh, three, four layers. This would be, this is just one of them, fleece. And on the exterior one, especially because of, of the weather conditions here, uh, a, a rain jacket, a raincoat, so as to keep you dry. That's basically gonna be providing a, a, a good level of protection and, and uh, versatility in, 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 in regards to staying warm and staying dry, which is, is pretty much important. Keep that in mind, guys. When you go backpacking, and maybe if it's raining, you cancel the trip. If you have a, a get home bag or a bug out bag, you may not have the choice. So if rain is something that you're likely to encounter uh, on, a, on a daily basis, keep that in mind and know what you're buying this is a pretty decent rain uh, coat um, it has the, the stitches that are sealed on the inside with a, a, a layer of waterproof uh, material so make sure those are sealed if the stitches aren't sealed even if the material is waterproof uh, if those aren't sealed water will still get through through those holes Right. In terms of pants, I just use my 511 uh, uh, Tac Light pants, which uh, are not waterproof, but still um, pretty good. They they don't get uh, wet that easily. They dry up pretty fast. So even though not ideal specifically for uh, for um, for backpacking and such, it is something that I do use uh, pretty often, and it does uh, the work a little bit better than just you know ordinary jeans that would just because of the cotton would suck up any water that comes into contact with them and takes forever to dry up. Uh, Shemag scarf. Uh, well, all this stuff, of course, I was using it because I was wearing it, so all this got used. Shemag scarf got used as well because of of the windy conditions, because of the rain. Cotton, guys, the, the, this shemag is made of cotton. Cotton is really not uh, ideal. It, it soaks up water uh, pretty fast. Um, you know, the, the shemag itself was useful, uh, but ideally, I would love to have a shemag that um, is not made out of cotton. At the same time, cotton is handy for when you have to pick up stuff uh, from a, you know, maybe a pot or a pen from a from a fire. Uh, cotton is better for that because it's not going to be melting in your hands. Uh, you know, even though it will burn, it's not going to be melting like like uh, synthetic stuff. So you know, just something to keep in mind. The shemag itself came in handy. I use it around the neck. I use it for um, covering my neck, my ears, my head, and with the layer, the exterior layer, kept keeping me dry. It wasn't that much of a problem. But uh, a few drops got through, and it does get wet. It didn't get soaking wet or anything like that. Still got the job done, but I already knew that cotton is, you know, is is not your your favorite uh, material for uh, your your favorite your favorite uh, f uh, fabric for rainy weather conditions. Pocket EDC stuff, which I always end up talking about. What got used, what didn't. A few little hanks of of cord in the pockets that didn't get used. Lighter, it did get used. A clipper lighter a headlamp it did get used when when it got dark and we were walking out a cell phone get it did get used so as to contact a family and such I was lucky enough to have signal it also has built-in GPS which can be very useful of course for obvious reasons but just you know uh, letting my wife know that w I was okay when I got there, letting her know what the schedule was, uh, she already knew how long I would be up there, uh, just uh, keeping her updated every once in a while so as to know if something went wrong, very important. Car keys, just the cars you <laughs> used to get me there, um, uh, the, the um, shades, eyewear, Wiley X which gets used on uh, on every on everyday basis as well did get used when walking uh, inside some of the um, heavier uh, uh, bush protects your eyes so it did get used for that now because it's shaded uh, and it was getting a little bit darker 
that was a, a little bit of a problem later on because you, you cannot see as well. So ideally, these would be uh, getting clear, like, the, like, like some of the ones that I've seen around, uh, it would be getting clear as it gets darker. But these ones, no, these are just like, they're not very dark, but they're dark enough that it's not that good for eye protection at night. Let's see what else. Uh, little bag, one of those got used. Gonna be getting to that in a second. But these little bags are, are nice, handy for various things. Um, Kleenex didn't use them. Uh, Multi tool, uh, charge, TTI, yes. Uh, I actually used uh, this. Uh, I ended up using the, the saw for moving the alcohol tablet in one of the, uh, one of the heaters. On one of those in that little cooker you moving that little tablet I use that part for for just doing that uh, what else car uh, house keys and such no I didn't use any of that uh, EDC flashlight I did end up using it a uh, small uh, well not small the uh, Victorinox gag knife uh, no I didn't use it uh, no 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 wallets and money no but this is pretty much essential so having it anyway does make a ton of sense Moving on, trying to do it fast. Uh, watch the uh, P, uh, um, Casio Pro Trek Triple Sensor PRG 250T, which I did cover in previous videos. Titanium, great stuff. Uh, yeah, actually, yes, we we used uh, the the compass so as to verify some of the observations of where moss grows on which side of the tree and such. Uh, but yes, it's it's some something that does come in handy every every once in a while and it, it's a you know the idea of having this watch was specifically that to have a, a compass right there the barometric chart also came in handy in fact especially with the poor weather conditions we already knew that we weren't looking into favorable weather anytime soon so yeah got used and it's always nice to, nice to have notice how much of the actual EDC did get used uh, baby wipes this is um, no, I didn't use these, but still, I wouldn't want to have a uh, uh, get home bag or bug out bag without them. Water, well, you know, this is how much water I drank during the entire trip. I didn't drink that much, wasn't that hot anyway. But even if it's not hot, even if it's raining, you will end up <laughs> using quite a bit of water. Uh, what else? Uh, a couple more Kleenexes, Kleenex uh, matches, didn't use them. These are very good matches. Um, Dextro energy candy no spare batteries for the EDC light crack there but still functional nope didn't use it uh, emergency radio with maps nope didn't use that either uh, uh, pen Kevlar cord no didn't use any of that uh, spare flashlight didn't use it either spare batteries for the Keychain flashlight, nope, and these also work for the radio as well. Um, headphones, nope, but you need the, these so as to work the radio, the FM radio, and the and the cell phone. Even though I did have a a, a spare radio as well. Uh, first aid stuff, just the well, the respirator, um, Celox gauze, and emergency band aid. Uh, soap, a uh, few more bags, an extra lighter, and soap. None of this stuff got used. Uh, another lighter as well, a ton of lighters, a little bit of uh, duct tape, and another hank of cord. As you see, lots of different hanks of cord. These I had in the pocket, these I had in, in the bag. Um, cord is, is pretty important and you should have at least a few uh, a few hanks. Maybe I, I tend to overdo it a little bit, but still, um, yeah, st still, you you may you want to have it because it can come in very handy in various um, in situations. And again, guys, a lot of this stuff doesn't get used, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. All right, a first aid kit you're not going to be using it all the time. Hopefully, you're not going to be using it a lot, but you you still need it nonetheless. What else? Um, knife. Uh, Cold Steel Voyager, nope, didn't use it. Not, still not, 
it's still pretty important so as we have it in terms of food and cooking this is a very simple uh, setup that I I I ended up trusting after years of years years and years of trying out stuff it's it's very simple there's really nothing fancy or crazy about it but it just works and if it works that's good enough for me um, I, I'm happy enough with the Trangia is a cooker it's it's good enough so as to heat up a, a meal and I actually use this and this as well I use both and I'll explain a little bit why the um, the solid fuel cooker very cheap little little thing but actually does work so that's um, you know that's that's important that's basically what you need you don't need anything fancy you just need stuff that works so let me get out get this out of the of the box here you probably uh, you've probably seen these many times uh, it's a solid fuel and just a folded um, tin metal nothing nothing crazy as you open it up you have those a couple of uh, a few of those uh, alcohol tablets I used one and I still have three more here um, and this is the the metal cup that I used it's in a, a garbage bag because it's 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 dirty and I place it inside a pack when bringing it up yeah, so basically what you would be doing is you open it up as you see I, I leave it a little bit closed because the cup is smaller than uh, than something may, maybe a uh, um, a tin pot or something like that so I leave it a little bit closed like that and the cup fits perfectly on top on a on level uh, terrain it's not gonna be falling so you leave it a little bit open like that you put the cup on top and you empty on it whatever it is that you need uh, cooking so just a, a metal simple cup which happens to be <laughs> dirty And what I had for for lunch was a uh, uh, a tin soup of Hanes beef broth soup. All right, a soup in the cup and heat it with just one of these tablets of of fuel. Um, yeah, uh, um, a, a can of soup may not be ideal, but you know, for for something like, like this, for a quick bite absolutely it will work and yeah in the amount of fuel one of these was just enough so as to heat heat up the soup it wasn't enough for uh, for doing any any kind of cooking any amount of cooking that wouldn't have been enough but it was enough for heating up soup or it would have been enough for making tea now this is the the system that i i've learned to like uh, in in different you know after trying it out pretty happy with it now I took both so I basically because I want to try this one the the solid fuel cooker uh, and I also took this one and even though I used this one myself I, ga I gave this one to Jay who was having a, a few issues in getting his his uh, meal heated up so uh, yeah this is what we used and it got the job done for him like it had done it for me many times in the past it filled it up uh, before leaving and that was you know that was enough for for cooking his well not for cooking but for at least heating up his food so Trangia yeah the only thing that I don't like about it is that you have to keep it up uh, keep it uh, fueled up with, with alcohol which in theory wouldn't be that much of a problem because you do have that rubber o-ring in there which seals the fuel inside but I wanted to try this one out because these fuel tablets seem like something that's less messy and um, you know with, with a liquid alcohol with liquid fuel uh, there's more chances of, of spilling and such or of it evaporating uh, this seems like uh, more trouble free then I also had the, um, the same uh, metal uh, water bottle that I've, uh, I've been using for some time. These are, I have a few of these. Uh, I like the, the, the metal water bottles a lot because 
even though in theory you could boil water in a plastic bottle um, yeah and, and this is just guys in theory because uh, yes, you, you can do it in practice as well, but you have to do it under certain certain circumstances and really guys boiling water in plastic a uh, Pretty bad idea. It gets soft uh, very much so and I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't want to be eating out of anything that has been boiled in a, in a plastic container Here we're talking about stainless steel. You can use it many times. It's not gonna be poking any holes through it It's not gonna be breaking you can use it time and time and again without any problem then refill it with water It's gonna be lasting uh, this is pretty much toxic and it's pretty much not gonna be lasting anything at all yeah, the system that I go by is uh, as, as a core system is the water bottle stainless steel with a big spoon that has been hammered a little bit on the side so as to fit perfectly in in the bottle so I have several of these bottles I have several of these a uh, cheap big spoons that I hammered uh, on the side so as to fit perfectly so this allows me to use this as a container for boiling water and boiling it for real I mean just putting it in a fire and boiling it without any problem the water will the bottle will not be breaking all right try and move forward a little bit faster a uh, knife I, I didn't use it I didn't have any need for it but a, a good solid fixed blade knife is something that I want to want to be without in any kind of, uh, of, of of emergency if at all possible yeah I do want one this is um, uh, bussy uh, uh, man, the model is street, street Boss, is it? I think so. I think it's a Street Boss. So, yeah, absolutely good. Good knife, not very heavy. Um, if, if I'm going into something that's more of a um, you know, long-term backpacking thing, I probably want something bigger. I, w I would want a, a bigger knife. But for uh, a light pack, like what you would be needing for a... Um, you know get home bag bug out bag or just a, a, a day hike this will do nicely uh, moving on try to do it fast uh, spare clothes I, I've been very much wet before didn't enjoy it especially when you cannot change back into dry clothes soon enough at least spare a set of socks underwear shorts and a t-shirt that's what I like to keep at the very least so if something happens, I have something dry to change back into. Notice it's in a waterproof bag. Emergency food, this would be like what you would be needing in a, in a typical get home bag. Just a little bit of, of, of chocolate, some, some sugar so as to keep you going, and maybe a couple of power bars. That's it for the average get home bag where you're gonna be walking maybe you know a, a few hours, maybe a day, even two days with a couple of of energy bars and and a little bit of chocolate and such that's it you don't need to make any uh, you know <laughs> um, fancy meals uh, for a bug out bag kit or a get home bag kit especially if you're just gonna be walking back home especially if it's not gonna be taking more than one even two days long don't waste uh, energy carrying heavy stuff just uh, focus on having water which is gonna be much more important uh, emergency shelter in case uh, I need any any of that um, space blanket uh, emergency emergency shelter which is gonna be easier to do and built with paracord so that's another way, reason why you should have some some spare paracord with you all right so is this really like a, a real tent no it's gonna be sucking it's gonna be noisy it's gonna be <laughs> falling apart all around you but at least it is something it is something to help you out build a proper shelter at the very least it could be used so as to keep you warm almost like a um, almost like a sleeping bag you know anything that helps you out keep keeping you warm it's gonna be at least better than nothing at all emergency poncho and uh, dust sheet a large one this is going to be handy for um, improvising a, a dry spot in the forest if it's raining so as to set camp and at least not get constantly wet all right so this is going to be used almost like a tarp and this is going to be used to make something of a shelter at least barely nothing a garbage bag what else do we have here almost done uh, toothbrush 
a little bit of, of toilet paper there in a, in a dry bag and a, a couple more garbage bags and a larger hank of paracord and that's it guys the, the backpack was simply this one uh, just a winger winger backpack almost like a school bag it's really not big at all you see the amount of, of stuff that I had with me it's not really a lot but uh, uh, a small backpack like this one small but with good construction sturdy enough uh, comfortable in the back in the back it wasn't uncomfortable at all uh, whatsoever so yes good good and good enough indeed I have a few of these and I do think they are pretty good for this kind of thing it's not a huge 60 liter backpacking bag but for this kind of thing it does get the job done and it's comfortable enough I even had a little bit room left there for any other thing that needed to be carried guys that's all for now and you know just a, a quick um, overview of some of the stuff that you may end up needing so as to put together a decent get home bag remember to subscribe see you on our next video take care have a great day